Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tack Out Garage. Uh, today we're going to be working on my 2007 Porsche Cayman. Um, I've got some tie rod ends that I need to do on it because I've noticed I've got a steering wheel shake at like 50 and up. Um, and then kind of wiggled the wheels, figured out that that seems to be my failure point, crawled under the car, double checked, verified, hit it with a pry bar. Sure enough, I need some tie rod ends on this thing. Also, I've got a really weird intermittent miss. Um, and on top of that, it keeps throwing a random check engine code for a lean condition on bank two. And so I did a bunch of research on that and it looks like it needs coil packs. Mind you, this has the original coil packs on it. It's got new plugs in it, but it's got original coil packs and I think it's time for them to go ahead and get swapped out. So those are going to be the two things we're going to tackle on the Porsche today. Uh, hopefully you come along for, for the ride and I can teach you a few things on uh, the, the quick way to do some things on this Porsche, um, especially when it comes to the coil packs. I've already done it once on this um, when I changed the engine out on it and I had put the original coil packs in because I was being cheap and didn't want to buy new ones. So that has come back to bite me, obviously. So we're going to do it again. Um, it, it's really not a terrible job to do these coil packs, but in the same regard, you gotta contort, you gotta work, you know, blind. The, the mechanics are, are, you know, some of the best people when it comes to being able to work on things we can't see. We're gonna do it all with our hands um, and use the force uh, to get everything working. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go on a ride and uh, I'll get you guys at a better angle and we're gonna start with coil packs first. All right, well, First things first, let's go ahead and get the wheels pulled off the car. So I'm lucky I have quick jacks. So it makes life a whole lot easier when you're working on your cars in the garage when you don't have a full size lift. So next best thing. So yeah, one of the best things that I figured out right off the bat when I did this job the first time around is there are a couple inner fender well liners that can need to come off and taking those off makes life a whole lot easier. So you look here, we got this liner here and then we've got this little bracket here. Um, both of these need to come out and it makes getting up into the engine a whole lot easier to get access to the coil packs. So that'll be the next thing to pull off. Um, it's a couple tens and I think a T20 or a T25, one of the two. Let's see. <clears throat> yep. Pull that guy off. Those two guys. And then I need a 10 mil. Oh, wouldn't you know it? I can't find my 10. <laughs> Shocking, right? All right, there's a 10. That'll work. <clears throat> and these little tens are just little plastic. There we go. They're plastic nuts. So go easy on them. You don't have to go crazy. Taking them off ob obviously is not a big challenge, but just remember when you're putting them back on, they don't need a lot of torque. A little goes a long way on those. So, all right, pull that one out. That's a hard plastic, pretty thick um, cover. That's one of two. And then the next one, that's gotta come out first. And then after you get that out, you can work this guy out. This one's a whole lot thinner. Same concept though, held in by very little. So now we've got lots of room for activities. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you in here. Grab a light. So, it's tight. 
not a whole lot to work with, but nonetheless, there's your coil packs. One, two, and you can kind of see number three right there. So that's what we're going after today. Both sides, get those all swapped out and life will be grand. Worst part is there's not a lot of good lighting places for it either. So we're gonna work with what we got. All right, so to pull these coil packs off, you either need to do, well, you can do both. An E10 socket, which is, let's see if we can focus, focus, focus. It's not gonna focus, is it? There it goes, all right. So your reverse Allen, or your reverse Torx, I should say, okay? E10, I know that was terrible, sorry guys. Um, and a little 3 8 extension probably want to get a wobble but i learned something and i figured this out last time after struggling with a couple of them because some of the stuff's going to get tight as you as you'll see here in a little bit so the e10 external torx heads will also work with an eight millimeter wrench so you got to be careful these aren't torqued really tight because they're coil packs, so they shouldn't be torqued tight. I would never suggest using one of these on a properly heavily torqued uh, e-torx head. But for this instance, because there's so little room, this works out fantastically. So this is just ratcheting head with my angles. And let me tell you what, it's a lifesaver when trying to do this job. So this is what I'm going to use as my weapon of choice. It's kind of the KISS method. It's kind of the KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. If this works, go with it because it's the easiest way to do it. It's nowhere near as bulky trying to get a socket in there and try to get on all this stuff. Um, there's just not a lot of uh, room to work. There's a frame, frame rail. There's a frame rail that like kind of gets in your way when you're trying to pull these packs out. And uh, so the thinner that you can go with tools, the better off you are. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get rocking on getting everything out and prepped. So I went with my favorite online store. No, I'm not sponsored. Boy, I wish I was, but uh, yeah, I get a lot of my stuff from Rock Auto. and. I always love getting my free magnets. So I've got quite the magnet collection on my uh, on my toolbox and uh, it's starting to become the color of magnets instead of the red that it originally was. So yeah, needless to say, I, uh, I get a lot from Rock Auto. Um, but that's not to say I don't use other retailers as well. It just so happens to be, you know, Rock just does everything for me that I need. So um, to give you a visual and to give you an idea of what I got, I went with basically OE quality, Bremi, um, for Porsche works really really well. It's highly recommended especially when it comes to the coil packs uh, They're the ones who actually came up with the new design as far as I remember um, with a bigger thicker coil pack um, And I just really like it because it's a good clean install uh, If you get some of uh, like the the off-brand coil packs They don't even have a, uh, a model number or anything stamped on the actual coil packs themselves and that's kind of sketch so with these um, you get an identification and you also get a date on them which is actually really unusual but really cool because it lets the next person who ends up with this car know when these were actually installed so to give you an example you can see right there it's got the date on it which is pretty cool and that's the part number listed above it so part number 20737 um, and as you can see, it's the upgraded version, um, but they come, you know, from Germany. Uh, Bremi is a German manufacturer, uh, and like I said, it is OE Porsche. Um, so it's a little less to worry about, and you know that it's just going to work, and everything's going to bolt in the right way. Uh, good solid boots. They even come pre-greased with dielectric grease inside. Let's see if I hide. Will the camera show it? No, of course not. Well, take my word for it. There's grease inside. Um, and it even comes with the new extended bolts. Um, and they even rubber band them just so they don't fall off during shipment. So just the little things, the little touches like that let you know the difference between cheap parts and good parts. Um, and that always means something to me, especially when I'm putting on something as nice as my Porsche. So it's not a beater. It's not a flipper per se. Um, it's something that I just want to run better and be around for a long time and work well. So... 
that's why we're rocking with that. Um, all right, now that you have seen what we're installing, I guess we can uh, get down to business and start doing the actual installing. And you guys can see, we're gonna go after those two bolts. So each coil pack has two bolts on it. There, and then this one is the tough one. So this one is tucked back behind. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, about right there. So um, that's the challenging one out of all of these. The only other challenging part is when you're actually pulling the packs out because you've got to deal with this frame rail here and it goes all the way up inside here. And so pulling it out, you've got just cables in the way, you've got hard lines, um, and then like here, you've got your power steering lines. So it's all a bit of a challenge right here. And once you do it a couple times, you, you kind of get a lot more efficient at it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dig into actually pulling these guys out. A mess out of my way. <clears throat> that one I never broke loose. The, the nice thing about these are, because they're coil packs, they're not really torqued down all that hardcore, which is great. So you can just kind of crack them loose, and once you do, you're good to go. So two out, just like that, with my little 8 millimeter ratcheting trick there. One of the hardest parts of this, honestly, aside from... <coughs> there we go. Um, Aside from just getting your hands in here, is also getting the uh, the harness loose on these coil packs because the harness itself has um, some weatherproofing over top of it. Let's see if I can show you show you the harness here. So there we go. Uh, there we go. So there's your harness, um, but the actual clip is hidden under this rubber boot right here. So it does make it a little bit difficult. Um, once you figure out where the clips are though, you can actually feel through the boot. So it's not too, too bad. It's just really, really tight. So you just gotta be, uh, be cognizant of where it is. And sometimes it's easier to pull the harness before you actually break the coil pack loose. Sometimes it's not. So it's kind of up to you. You figure it out as you go. Um, with me on this one specifically, I broke it loose after the fact. I will probably do the same for this middle guy, but for this edge guy here that's hiding behind these power steering lines, I will probably go ahead and try to pop that loose before I pull those out. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these yanked out real quick, and then we'll be back. Come on. There we go. No. Got it. Ow. That's just a knuckle. It's okay. <sighs> Too loud. Can't see nothing on this top one. You just gotta go by feel. Like I was saying, mechanics have some of the, <laughs> the best touch senses out of anyone because most of the time we can't see what we're working on. We have an idea of what we're working on. We know the general vicinity of it. Ow. But actually getting it, that's, that's the kicker. So, all right. Those power steering lines, you can pull those out of the way, just be gentle with it, obviously, but they're not really secured in by anything at that very specific point. I guess the, 
<laughs> the engineer or designer was actually thinking when they designed that specific point um, that, yeah, they, they are not in the way, which is fantastic. So um, once you get that done, you're good to go. All right, we got all three out. Let's see if I can get you better light here. There we go. All right, so one, two, and three. And like I said, three. Three is the most challenging by far. It's just kind of hiding back there. And these are the power steering lines. You can just kind of nudge those out of the way. And you'll get just enough room to kind of wiggle everything and get it working. So, like I said, I've already done plugs on this car. These are practically brand new plugs. They only have maybe 500 miles on them. So we're not going to mess with the plugs at all. We're just going to go ahead and swap out the packs. Like I should have done in the first place, but here we are. So, all right, let's go ahead and get those installed. I really like the fact that this is just a complete setup when it comes with these coils. Um, the fact that they come with the bolts is just, yeah, pretty fantastic. Um, anytime you get new hardware, use the new hardware. You got it. You might as well use it. It's not going to hurt anything to not. Um, getting these plugs to engage. It's definitely a bit of a challenge. Uh, I have noticed that. Usually when you put coil packs on, you kind of feel like a, a satisfying click. And I haven't gotten that with these. Um, when I did it last time, I didn't notice any click and it made me nervous, but I guess it's just one of those deals where it's just got the spring and that's it. get to this one once again power steering lines very conveniently placed in the way of where you need to be um, to put the bolt in and you know get your fingers in there so there's that um, but once you get it started I mean it's easy peasy but once again doing it all by feel you can't really see what you're doing sometimes it helps to uh, to run in the bottom B bolt especially on this first coil pack, just because you can't see what you're doing. And that kind of helps suck it in and align it. So you can go ahead and uh, get that top bolt, top bolt started. Because it is by far the most challenging for this whole job. Come on, baby, start. No, nothing. You're going to fight me. Fight me. What did I do? Is that what I did? You big dumb dummy. All right, that's why. Don't forget to pl plug in the coil harness. Because if you don't, it gets in the way. Then you can't put, there it goes. You can't push the coil pack all the way in. That explains why I couldn't get the bolt to seat because there was a plastic connector in the way you tell me okay once you get the bolt started then you can go ahead and just whip them in real quick and remember this is not a strongman competition so these do not have to be stupid tight you want them weather sealed obviously but outside of that you're going finger tight Bring them in until you snug them, and then you're good. I think there might be a torque spec for these. Um, and if it is, it's probably around like 8 to 10 foot-pounds, which would be like, I don't know, some inch pounds. Regardless, they're coil packs. They're not moving. They're not going anywhere. Just basically set it into place. Once you feel them get snug, give them one extra little like quarter turn. Snug them down. Boom, you're done. Bob's your uncle. I'm going to stick these in here. I don't know which one's bad, but it never hurts to have backups. I'll hold on to them for a little while because, well, it's certainly possible you can get a bad one out of the, uh, out of the box. We all know we've seen that time and time again. 
even from quality brands you know it's just part of the manufacturing process every once in a while you get a bad egg so i would suggest hold on to the old parts at least for a little while um and then you know after they've proven themselves then you can go ahead and get rid of them and recycle them responsibly or irresponsibly that's up to you i'm gonna suggest responsibly but You are your own person, you do your thing. No judgment here. How did they... See? Things get packaged in a fancy way. I can't package them back. There we go. Okay, so one is in. Go ahead and put the next guy in here in the middle. The hardest one's done, basically, so... Ow all downhill from here. Come on. Hands down the hardest part when you're doing the install of these is using both hands in this tiny little confined space um, because it wants to push back on you because it's got a heck of a spring in it, I'm assuming. And to get the bolts started, you gotta really push down on the coil pack. But once they get started, super easy. Snug, click, torque. Snug, click, torque. There's certain things that I do use torque wrenches on and Make sure I'm following factory specs and all that, but frankly, this job just isn't one of them. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not, it's not rocket science. One of my favorite others, at the end of the day, it's not rocket surgery. I am not a rocket surgeon. One more. Oh, once again, don't forget the clip, the harness. They go on a whole lot easier than they come off, let me tell you. And then just make sure your boot is pulled down over top, so that way you maintain the weatherproofing that portion sisted. Um, and I get it, because these are kind of exposed. There's not really an underbelly tray back here. Um, so just kind of shimmy it down. Even though the connectors do have, I mean, they got O-rings in them, so they do have some weatherproofing in and of themselves, but Porsche over-engineered it. And we'll stick with what they over-engineered. All right. Um, on this last one, frame rail does get in the way, so it's the furthest back bank. Um, the frame rail does get in the way when you're trying to put it in. The trick is to twist it at an angle and get the boot started and then kind of bend the boot just a little bit, not a lot. And as you're holding it at that angle, you'll clear the frame rail. Then you can rotate it straight and you'll feel the boot kind of realign. Make sure it realigns so it's not twisted inside the actual cylinder head or the <laughs> valve cover. Um, and then once you get it in place, everything's good. So little tip there. That little twist goes a long way to helping you out, so. Once again, two hands, push in with one while you're twisting with the other. And she'll f go right in. All right. Last ones. telling you this sock or this ratcheting wrench method was one of the best discoveries I made and it was just by accident I didn't even get it off the forums or anything like that somebody probably has already made this discovery but 
it was life changing for me, let me tell you. Um, Cause I was struggling on the other side last time I did this and couldn't get a socket on one of these guys on the other side to save my soul. And it was driving me up an absolute wall. And finally out of desperation, <clears throat> started looking for six point wrenches and blah, blah, blah. And just out of sheer dumb luck, I tried a 12 point and a nine was a little too big. I thought maybe it was a 10 cause it was E10. That didn't work. And then sure enough, throw a, throw a metric eight on it. She fits like a glove and it has good grip. It doesn't slip anything like that. It feels great. Like I said, you don't want to go crazy on torquing or untorquing anything um, when it comes to using those star heads. But for this specific reason, it worked fantastic. So good little tip. And uh, just like that, this side's already done. Uh, it goes so much faster once you've done it once. Um, but yeah, bring you in real quick and you can just take a peek at the finished product. Double check. Hi. There we go. All right. Double check your work. Make sure that you have all your connectors plugged in. Uh, let's see. We'll go like that. There we go. All right. Make sure you got your connectors plugged in. And you can see I have the, the rain boot pushed over as well. Um, get a good seal on all that. And you'll be good to go. Everything is relatively torqued down. Uh, like I said, don't go crazy on your torque and you'll be fine. So this is one side done. Let's go ahead and we will put the inner fender liners back on. And then we'll be able to button this side up and be completely done with it. So quick and easy job. Not too, too bad. That's it. I was always worried, you know, when I got a Porsche, like this was going to be hard. You know, I had never worked on Porsches before and working on just a Euro in general. I was a Mini Cooper guy for a very long time. So, you know, I wasn't fully intimidated by the idea of working on any kind of a Euro vehicle, but it's a Porsche. Porsches are undoubtedly um, a little complicated, but once you actually work on this thing, she's really, really easy to work on. Um, very, very simple tools, nothing extravagant or anything like that. It is shocking. So there's our fender liner put in. Um, one of the big things to a uh, gotcha is right here along the mud flap. There's, um, there's an indentation on the actual fender liner that you need to line up and then it even has a notch right there. So everything just lines up. So that way you can get your holes lined up. And then you've got a stud sticking out right there. And you also got a stud sticking out right there. That's for your plastic nuts. That holds everything on. The one kicker is you don't put this one on until the end because your other plastic piece actually goes over this. So these share the same fastener. So, but we do have that one. And then down here, you just got a couple Torx heads. And another one. Get them started. Once again, it's another thing where it doesn't have to be stupid tight. You can kind of just feel once it gets finger tight, it kind of hits a stop point and then you're done. Yep. <laughs> or, you know, your hand slips. So, all right, that. And go ahead, put your plastic screw on, grab your cheater gun, go easy on this, don't need to torque, done. That's literally it. So a couple of duggas on the simple impact, which is, you know, just the household one with a quarter inch tip on it. Um, but that's all you need. You don't need to go crazy on the torque. And give you an idea of what focus kind of and give you an idea of just you know the uh the stud just comes out to the end of the nut so nothing crazy super simple so all right last piece this guy go up and in under the brake line and then up and over your studs 
lines right up very nicely and it's just those three connectors so do your plastic nut on stud one and like i said this is the one don't put the don't put this plastic nut on when you put this first liner on so this piece and the fender liner both share that stud same thing on this guy quick plastic nut i like to start all three of these before i actually torque anything down and one more torx and that's it that's all you need to secure this guy really hope this you know helps a lot of people that are kind of intimidated by working on Porsches in general um, but doing something as simple as a coil pack I mean basic hand tools I mean just to do this whole thing I think I have a T20 or a T25 Torx just good old handled one nothing crazy and a 10 millimeter to do your nut same thing for this 10 millimeters t20 or 25 whatever size that is and then to do your actual coil packs as long as you don't run into anything crazy you don't even need an e-torque socket you don't need the e10 get an eight millimeter it doesn't even have to be uh, ratcheting just make sure it's a 12.8 millimeter wrench and you can do this job three tools and you're done well you know four tools if you count being able to take the uh Take your wheel off. I suppose there's that. So, but aside from that, to actually do this job after you have the wheel off, three tools, basic, basic hand tools, and that's it. A little bit of dirt, a little bit of elbow grease, and, and you're good. So, all right, I'm going to get reset up and we'll go ahead and move over to the passenger side and get that side done. It's a little bit more challenging, so I do want to show you guys it's not, you know, exactly redundant. So, all right, hello from the other side, in the great words of Adele. Um, I know that was corny, but nonetheless, more of the same on this side. We'll go ahead and get our covers pulled off real quick. plastic nuts hard cover off first then to pull this inside cover and my battery died <laughs> still getting used to this stuff let me tell you I am not a filmmaker by any stretch I'm a grunt <clears throat> that does mechanic work So the learning is real. All right, um, let's get our thing in here. So this side is a little tight. Um, it's tight in different ways. It's just the way that the O2 sensors sit and there's a couple coolant pipes and whatnot. So let's go ahead and show you. So if you look up in there, still got coil packs. One, two, and three. There we go, give me some light. One, two, and three. There we go, all right. So they're not terrible to get to. Honestly, the part I struggle with the most on this side, I remember from last time, is actually getting to the actual, uh, the harness connectors. So if you can get to those, it's not too, too bad. This one is definitely tight because you've got coolant crossover pipes right here. Um, and they're a little bit harder. There's not as much give. It is rubber right here, so you got metal metal and then it transitions to rubber so you can kind of nudge it up out of the way with your thumb and then bend the actual coil pack over enough once you start getting it out to get it the rest of the way out so with that we'll go ahead and start yanking these out and i'll uh, be back with the first person once we can uh, have some updates for you once again i'm gonna go ahead and use the the trusty eight millimeter method thankfully 
I know the last guy that did these. Oh, he was a little stronger than I thought. Dang. Ah. Obviously, that guy was me. Um, I must have ate my Wheaties that day. So this very front one was the one <laughs> I remember fighting with big time because you got O2 sensor harness right in the way with the actual tail of the O2 sensor sticking up and it gets right in your teeth. Um, and then you got these coolant crossover pipes and just <laughs> just getting this thing loose was a nightmare last time. I think I remember I had to kind of yeah, wiggle your finger up inside the, uh, the weather jacket so you can feel where you need to push down on the connector and then go ahead and push it up got it okay so that one sucks um even then suck is a is a relative term it's not the end of the world it's not the worst thing um knowing how to get to it is half the battle like i said the first time i really struggled with this so it's a whole lot easier the second time around so you for you first timers i'm really hoping that I'm giving you some valuable pointers so you can just dive right into this and get it done quick. So comes right out, clears past the coolant pipes relatively easily. Like I said, you just got to bend it facing the engine. You got to bend it to the left just a little bit. As long as you bend it to the left a little bit, you'll be able to pull it straight out. It'll clear your coolant crossover and life is grand. Go ahead and pull out the new shiny hotness. And same concept. These are dated 5.6 of 22. So they really didn't sit on a shelf for all that long, um, which is kind of cool, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm not going to show you guys empty holes. That's, I guess, boring. Um, get the general idea. I showed you where everything mounts once again getting that harness plug out of the way while you're trying to get these in is definitely part of the battle. Are these the new shinies? These are the new shinies. I find it a lot easier to get the bottom one of these started and then pop in the top and then you can pivot it back and forth until you hit the actual bolt hole. Because the top ones are always a little bit more difficult to get to and I really do I just finger tighten these guys um, down to the, almost the very end just to save on the ratcheting action and tight torque all right and first one's torqued down once again fight that harness hands down hardest part of this side is this harness that's the the rearmost coil pack basically towards the car to the rear of the car uh, but getting it in definitely proves to be challenging you can't see nothing and like I said reach up inside that weather piece of the the rubber and just go ahead and get your fingers worked in there and once you do that it's actually not the end of the world um, but I struggled with that for a while because I just wasn't smart enough I guess to move the actual the rubber surround out of the way of the the clip and that made things exponentially harder so all right on to the middle one one loose two loose this one is by far the easiest to get to and the easiest connector to remove it's a wide open shot, so you should not have a problem with this side. Ow. All right. Number two is out. Yeah. Well, come on. 
Somebody was a little overzealous in designing this packaging. But Lord knows these stay secure in there. Just don't do the mechanics any favors. Hold one in. Start that bottom one, top one, basically by feel. You can kind of contort yourself to be able to see where you're going, but feel. Like I said, use the force, the force is with you. connector in and I say this but legitimately easiest way not to forget stuff is to do it along the way can't tell you how many times I've forgotten a connector or something because I'm trying to multitask and pull a bunch of stuff at the same time and then reinstall stuff and then you just forget a step and well a connector is a very important step because well Nothing's gonna work if it doesn't have a signal. Ow, that one's tight still. There we go. One, and two. And two, and two. All right, pulling this frontmost pack out. It's a little bit more challenging. Once again, getting the connector. Definitely fight you a bit of the way there it goes you do get a satisfying click when it releases so you kind of know when you've successfully got it disconnected and like I said worst comes to worst work your finger up in there and pop it out holy crap Working blind, working blind. Come on, baby. Got it, okay. So that one, part of it is, uh, with that rearmost connector, you don't have a lot of room to actually physically move the connector up and out of the way of the coil. So you get it unclicked, you hear it click, and you can push it up, but then it feels like there's resistance, almost like it's still clicked on, when in reality, there's just not a lot of room for it to move vertically with the whole harness. Um, so you've really got to kind of get in there and really force it up. Um, and then the same concept as we're putting the replacement in, you got to make sure that it is not in the way because that's with so little room, it's going to get in your way. So you kind of got to just be a little brutal with it. Not to the point of breaking it, but Maybe not brutal. How about forceful? How about intentional? Convincing? We could go with convincing. Convincing would be a good word to use for it. Um, you know, convince it to get out of your way. Done with those. All right, let's see if we can get this guy fed in here. Yep. Really the coil pack getting back in or getting it out and getting it back in isn't the problem. Like I said, back here, your biggest challenge, single challenge is the actual connector itself. It's just, it's in a crappy place. It doesn't have a lot of upward movement and you need upward movement to be able to get it put in. So it's a bit of a catch 22. Let's see if I can get this seated. Finding the bolt holes is a challenge on this one as well. All feel, 100% feel. You just gotta feel your way through it. And for this one, I highly suggest you go ahead and 
cinch the coil pack down first before you try plugging the connector back in. Just like I said, make sure the connector is not in the way or in the path of the coil pack itself. And I can't even do this one all the way by hand, so we're just gonna ratchet it all the way on. And torque. Right, last one. We're tight. Now, Russell. Hey. So what I did is I lined it up on top of the coil pack right before it was going to plug in. So it wasn't that hard of a fight. Um, but the benefit of having the coil pack cinched down is then there's no wiggle room. So some of these you need wiggle room to be able to actually get the connector off. With that one specifically, because there's so little up and down movement with the actual harness, cinch that so coil pack all the way down. And then once it's good and tight and not moving anywhere, then go ahead and plug it in and it's going to make life a whole lot easier. Oh. All right, so that does it for the back of the car. Um, I've got all my coil packs changed out, so hopefully that's going to solve one of my big problems. Um, if I still end up getting a lean condition on bank two, that means more than likely I've got a vacuum leak or something along those lines on this side of the car. I think this is bank two. Regardless, um, it's something I'll have to dig deeper into. I know the engine, I did have a problem with one of the crossover tubes for the PV, uh, PCB system that it cracked in a spot. I sealed it back up kind of ghetto fabulous because that tube was like $160 and I'm really cheap. And it's just a piece of corrugated plastic. It blew my mind how much that tube was. Um, so I'll have to double check that make sure I don't have any air leaks. But I'm not gonna cross that bridge until I can take this guy out for a drive and number one, make sure I got all my power back, uh, make sure the idle is smooth. It still had lots of power, so it's not like I had a fully failed coil pack. It was a weird one. Um, but sitting at idle, you could kind of feel, it would lug a little bit and you just had a vibration and just, it didn't feel right. And then, like I said, when I would just get the random intermittent code uh, talking about a lean condition, I looked it up and you know that could be coil pack related as well, so I figure, these are OG coil packs. It needs it regardless. I had already put the new spark plugs in, kind of hoping that I could be cheap and not get away with coil packs, but it's a good maintenance item. These things, I guess, are kind of somewhat known for eating through coil packs. Um, my best advice would be don't cheap out. Get at least an OE equivalent coil pack. Don't go with the no-name Amazon brand or eBay brand that just doesn't even have anything printed on it. Um, you'll end up regretting it in the end. Granted, this is an easy job, especially if you follow my tips and tricks on this, it'll make your job that much quicker and faster. Uh, I would estimate without filming, um, I probably could do this job in like 20 minutes flat. Uh, it's that easy now that I know how to do it. Um, with the lift, obviously, <laughs> it does make it a whole lot easier, but even laying on the ground, bump that out to about a half an hour. As long as you know what you're doing and you have guides like this to be able to tell you the quick and easy way to do this stuff and you know the simple trick to use in an eight millimeter ratcheting wrench makes a world of difference and speeds everything up tremendously. So your mileage may vary depending on where you are. Um, it depends on if you've got corrosion or how old the car is or how many miles are on the coil packs. Maybe they won't come out as easy. It did make a difference that you know I had just freshly installed or reinstalled these coil packs when I changed out the spark plugs when I was putting this engine in. So like I said, your mileage may vary, but nonetheless, it's not a terrible job. It's not super daunting. It is something you can do with simply three tools. As long as you can take a tire off, you only need three more tools and you can do this job. Uh, at the end of the day, I, I really think just about anybody with even an ounce of mechanical inclination can do this job. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this buttoned up and then we're gonna move up to the front and go ahead and do our tie rod ends. All right, so next up, we're gonna do tie rod ends on the Porsche. Once again, it's like any other car. They're really not scary. Um, the biggest thing you wanna make sure of is to get your measurements in place. Um, I just use a caliper basically to go ahead and try to get as close as possible to the position that the current one is in now. 
Um, so that way I can drive the car um, and then I can worry about getting an alignment, you know, soon, but not immediately. So it won't crab, crab walk down the road or anything like that. I should be able to drive the car around. So uh, that's one of the biggest things to make sure of though, is just getting your measurement in place. Um, So what I'm talking about is on camera. right here. So you've got a nut that holds it in place and then you've got your actual tie rod and you've got your inner tie rod back here. It's a little dark, I'll get you some light. But nonetheless, basically what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get a measurement I usually will go from the inside of the tie rod boot to the back of the nut. And in theory, this boot shouldn't really be disturbed or anything like that as long as you're taking this off and not going super rough with it. Um, but that's where you wanna get your measurement. And so that way when you put your new tie rod on, as long as it's the same length and it matches factory specs, you should be good and have a decent alignment. One of the things you wanna make sure of um, before you start this off is make sure that you don't have keys in the ignition and you have your steering wheel centered so that way you just have the best chance of preserving the alignment that you already have on the car. On this one specifically, the alignment is fantastic. I can drive down the road and take my hands off the wheel and it'll just track straight. So I wanna to try to preserve that as much as possible. I'm really hoping I nail it. That way I don't even have to get an alignment, um, but I'll just, you know, we'll see how it goes after I get it installed. You know me, I'm all about trying to save a little bit of money here. So um, I'm gonna try and do my best to see if we can get it pretty much spot on. I don't drive this car that much. It's not like I take it on massive road trips or anything like that. So if I can get that alignment as close as possible, I'm gonna be a happy camper. Obviously, if it's off, if it feels funny in any way, shape or form, I'll take it and cough up the hundred bucks to go ahead and get it aligned. So uh, we'll go ahead and get rocking on this. I gotta grab a couple tools and I'll be back with a tool list. All right, um, to do this job, once again, it's really simple hand tools. There's not, not a whole lot of magic. You don't need anything super special. So to rifle off the list, you want a 13. 13 is gonna hold your inner tie rod in place as you're backing off the outer tie rod. Um, so you wanna get that. You are going to need a pair of 21 millimeter wrenches. Um, that's to crack the holding nut loose and back the tie rod off at the same time. So the outer tie rod, uh, they both use a 21. Uh, you could get away with using a crescent wrench on one side of it if you wanted to, instead of having two 21s. I know not everybody would have two, but at minimum you need one and a good size crescent wrench uh, to be able to back off the outer tie rod. So to get the tie rod nut off at the knuckle, you are going to need an 18 millimeter. So with this setup, you can pop a socket on there, hit it with an impact and hope that it backs off and that the ball doesn't spin inside there. I guess it really depends on how wore out your tie rod is. If that does not work, fret not, get yourself an 18 millimeter wrench and then you're gonna need a Torx bit. Um, it's a T40. So my plan is I'm gonna to try to hit it with the impact. If that doesn't do the job, I've got an 18 millimeter ratcheting wrench and I've got a T40 Torx and we'll just hold it. So basically the Torx goes down into the actual stud of the, the tie rod end ball. And then you just back your nut off with the 18 while you hold the stud in place. So that's all the tools you need uh, to do this job and to do it well, not even trying to get a rig it or anything like that. Um, once again, kind of demystifying this car it's just like any other car there's not there's not a lot of you know science and and, and special tools needed uh for euros i have come to figure this out the biggest thing that you need when you're working on euros make sure you've got a good torque set and make sure you've got a good e-torque set um and then plenty of metric tools that's the other big thing um, but outside of that you really don't need a ton to do the real basic maintenance stuff on these cars so that's the biggest thing is uh a lot of the stuff that you're gonna do in your garage, it's gonna be basic maintenance. So if you can do it in your garage and not have to have a huge tool set and not need specialty tools, it just further empowers you to go ahead and do it and save yourself a lot of time, uh, save yourself a lot of money. Uh, you can buy your own parts a whole heck of a lot cheaper than you would pay if you had the mechanic buy them, and then you're saving on the labor itself. So, And you get the satisfaction of working on your own cars. That's part of it that I love the most, is just keeping my own cars on the road 
and obviously saving myself a few dollars in the process. So uh, with that, we're gonna go ahead and get rolling on this and uh, we'll get this first tie rod off. All right, so first things first, let's get cracking on breaking loose the actual joint at the knuckle. So for that, like I said, I'm gonna try it with my impact first, see if we get lucky and we can just crack it loose. Once again, this is an 18 millimeter. And we didn't get lucky, <laughs> as I suspected. So if that happens, you got to go manual with it. And that's a pain in the butt, but here we are. Now, since I am replacing these tie rod ends, I'm going to speed the process along. <laughs> I'm going to take my T40, hook it up to my impact because it is a half inch and I'm just gonna hold the nut with my 18 and instead of actually backing things off that way, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna spin the, the tie rod end ball and back things off that way instead. Maybe. Or not. Go to the other end. There we go. And we're cracked loose. Just that easy. And the ball popped right out too. Wow. Okay. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my caliper and I'm just going to break it. <laughs> All right. There we go. Put my hand on the thumb instead and pull it apart until I've got my measurement. Now leave that caliper there. You've got your measurement in between. Now you can go ahead and try to crack your nuts and bolts loose and see if you can get it to work. All right, now that I almost broke my very expensive camera, that would have made me cry. Let's try this again, shall we? So we're going ready, tidy, lefty, loosey. This bad boy is on here. Like on here. Okay. Let's try it this way. No? I need some kind of leverage point here. Well, I was hoping I could move the knuckle out of the way. That didn't work out very well for me. <laughs> this light is so fragile. There's one thing. I really, really need to invest in. There's some better freaking lights, guys. Because, well, I'm not very good at this. All right. You go that way. All right. Now let's see if we can crack this loose. Good God. All right. Broke it loose. So now you can take your 13, hold the inner, and hopefully rotate the outer. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Apparently. Okay. You just gotta crack it loose from the crust. Rotate it off. Some guys count how many turns. Frankly, the counting never method never worked really well for me. 
Because it's not as precise. I mean, with a caliper, you're knowing the exact distance that you need to be at. And it just makes a heck of a lot more sense to do an exact distance deal instead. That's a lot of turns that you would have had to account it. So I think this is the better route is just get your measurement, go from the boot to your nut. And then when you set back, everything should line up. So, oh, all right. Tie rod end, simple piece. So I went with good old Delphi because well, it was cheap. I've used Delphi stuff in the past. I've never had a problem with it and it works. Um, the Delphi tie rod end part numbers on both sides are identical. So there's your part number. TA2875 11B1. Once again, got it from my favorite online tool store, Rock Auto. Get the new hotness out. And it basically looks identical. So these are non serviceable. I didn't really see a serviceable option, which was interesting to me. Um, but basically, all you want to do, double check. Make sure they're the same length so that way you know when you're uh, putting everything back together everything is gonna be good and these ones are basically identical so pretty much looks like it came from the same casting if we're gonna be dead honest so that means everything should play very very nicely um, I do not foresee any problems cool all right Go ahead and spin this one on. Oh, I knocked you over. I just realized I'm blinding everybody here. Okay. Just basically go by hand, spin it on until you get very, very close to your final destination. If you start feeling or seeing your inner tie rod spin, which this one was starting to, go ahead and grab it with your 13, hold that tie rod in still, and then when you're very, very close, that should be pretty, pretty much dead on, you want to end with your nut facing upwards. And then go ahead and bring your lock nut in and grab your caliper and see where you happen to be. See if you're close or see if you're far. For me, I mean, spot on. Dead nuts match. That's his fantastic so now that I know my measurement is good let's see if I can get a 21 on hold that bad boy tight get your 21 on Ow. hurt yourself and What's the German say? Guten tight. Guten tight? We'll go guten tight. They don't say it, they should because that's a fantastic substitute. All right, now that that's tight, you're basically, you're done on that end. Now you just gotta wiggle your knuckle back and forth, get your threads through. And new tie rod. And comes with new nut. Get your nut on. Now, we're going to try and cheat. Sometimes you get lucky with a brand new end where you can put your tip on.
Oh. <laughs> Something else to check for. New hardware, new size. <laughs> Same size as your lug nuts, so you already got a 19 by you. But just know, that's something to check for. All right, let's see if she'll go. Yes. And Ugga Duggas. Once again, this is a part that I, I really don't worry about. A torque value, per se. Probably should. Don't take my advice. I'm stupid. Follow the factory values. <clears throat> you guys watch me for entertainment, not for torque values. <laughs> but that's it. That's, that's, that's literally it. We're done. That's Everything's torqued down. Torqued down. Uh, that is pretty darn solid. She feels pretty good. And we're done. So I'll go ahead and do it on the other side. Uh, I won't waste your time trying to show you that. But... That's literally it. Um, once you have, you know, your tool list, you can dig out all your tools and everything like that, and you actually sit down to do this. Five minute job, ten minutes tops. Once again, everything slows down while you're trying to film it. But in a normal, perfect world, five ten minutes tops, and you can change out a tie rod end and do it the right way with, you know, like good specs. So. I'm fully confident with as close as I nailed it with that caliper, I probably won't need an actual alignment. Um, there could be variances in the product that it might be off by a couple millimeters, um, but I, I don't. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think I'm going to get away with it um, because these eyeball-wise, these look identical in length, they look identical in cast and everything to the, the ones that I took off. So, all things considered, my measurement should be spot on and I should have a great alignment. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side and then I'll catch back up with you guys and we'll wrap this up. That was some good basic maintenance done on the Porsche today. Um, getting the tie rod ends done, that was a big one, that shake. Shake was driving me absolutely crazy. And then hopefully I've got a little bit more increased performance and get rid of that stutter and shake at idle and hopefully that nagging OBD2 code will go away. All right guys, that does it for me. Uh, we got some good maintenance done on the Porsche today. I think uh, the, the things that we did, I hopefully demystified for you. Basic hand tools can do a lot of things on a lot of cars. A Porsche is no different, um, you come to find out, really. It gets different when you get into the, the upper echelon of, of Porsche models and whatnot. It might be a little bit different, but on something like a Cayman, um, I consider this kind of like the everyman's car. Um, you can get these at a decent deal and you can work on them yourself. So you don't have to be near a Porsche dealer or you know an, a, an import dealer or anything like that or you know a specialist. I did it with basic hand tools in the garage. You know, I did have the cheat of having my quick jacks as you know a, a mini lift, but even just jack and jack stands, you can get the job done. Um, changing out the coil packs, probably a half an hour job if you just dig right into it. Know the tools you have ahead of time. You can just you know get it done uh, with the front tie rod ends. Once again, that's something that scares a lot of people. Well, it's because it's the steering and the suspension, but in reality five minutes aside and you're done. Think about what you would have to pay a mechanic shop, you know, have to take your car there, wait for them to actually get it, them to actually do the work, and then, you know, have to get the alignment afterwards and all that. You're out of pocket a lot of money. I'm out of pocket maybe 40 bucks, and I got my alignment pretty much spot on from what I can tell. I'll know more when I drive it, but it seems like it's great. So don't be afraid to work on these things pick up a wrench dig into it i'm hoping that these you know these videos will give you some tips and tricks and, and make it a little bit easier for you but i just i love to empower anybody who you know wants to be able to work on their own cars and you don't need a huge tool set just a basic hand set will will get a lot of this done your your wild cards will be like the 21 millimeter size wrench those you might need to you know run down to the store and grab but you can grab just a 21 millimeter wrench from you know most auto parts stores so even that's not unobtainium so you should be able to get it so um but with that yeah uh we're wrapping up today i hope you guys enjoyed this episode of tack out garage um until next time be healthy and be safe <laughs>